In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact steps that I would take if I had to start over completely from scratch getting into a new career as a data analyst with no skills, no experience, nothing. Now, I got my first job as a data analyst almost 10 years ago, and while the job itself is basically the same as it was back then, there are a lot of things about the market that have changed since then. So if I had to start all over today, I would do things a little differently than I did when I first got into the field. So here is the specific eight-step process that I would follow if I was starting from scratch today. So the first step would be to get really, really good at Excel. Excel is the highest impact skill that you could learn as a data analyst. It is the jack of all trades. It's super versatile. There's just about anything that you can do with Excel and it'll cover for weaknesses in other programs. So if you're not that good at SQL or you're not that good at data visualization, you can do just about all of it in Excel if you're really good at it. So that's why I put that first. It's the most used, it's the most versatile, and it's gonna serve you in wherever you go with your life or your career. Any, just about any office job, you're gonna be more valuable if you're good at Excel, or even if you start a business. You know, I run a business and I use Excel just about every day. It's so helpful. Like the, the quality of your life is basically correlated to how good you are at Excel. So don't skimp on that. Now, step two, I would learn SQL. SQL is a requirement for just about any data analyst job that you ever come across. You can learn SQL pretty fast. You don't really need to get super in depth with it, but you do want to know the basics because you're always going to have to learn it. And so I recommend that you start with SQL Server, which is the Microsoft version of SQL, and get to know Azure a little bit, which is their cloud-based uh, database software. Which, by the way, it doesn't really matter a whole lot which version of SQL you learn. Like if you go and learn Snowflake or you learn Oracle or whatever, it's not really going to make a very big difference. Now, step three is I would learn a data visualization software. That's one of those softwares that turns your data into pretty charts and tables and dashboards. This is a requirement for most data analyst jobs, and there's a lot of different softwares that do this. There's a lot of different data visualization softwares, and they're all just about the same, and it really doesn't matter a whole lot which one you learn. But if I was just getting started, I would start with either Tableau or Power BI. Power BI is nice because it's Microsoft, and since we're already doing Microsoft SQL and Microsoft Excel, it just kind of keeps it all within the Microsoft suite of products that all communicate nicely with each other. And Tableau is pretty cool too because it has this Tableau public, which is a thing where people will publish their dashboards publicly so that anybody can see them. And so you can take a look at any time in the Tableau public website and see a whole bunch of examples of what's possible to do in Tableau. It's really helpful for getting ideas. So either one of those is fine, but you wanna learn one data visualization tool. Step four is learn VBA. Now this is something that I'm gonna differ from just about every boot camp and just about every data guru that you see on YouTube. Nobody else is saying this, but this was the key for me to get into the field was VBA. If you don't know what VBA is, VBA is the back end code that you use in the Microsoft Office product. So mostly in Excel, but you can also use it in Access. You can also use it in PowerPoint. And basically what it lets you do is automate stuff. So if you have things where you uh, write a formula in Excel and then you pull down the formula and then you copy and paste it to another sheet and then you update a pivot table and you know whatever uh, Excel process well you can write out code that you just push a little button and it just does all of that in a second it's a really, really cool skill to have. It's super useful and people think that you're absolutely amazing if you can go in and automate their processes like that. So while a lot of people are out there saying that you should go learn Python, I would highly recommend that you learn VBA instead because VBA is more useful because it's already within Excel, right? You don't have to take it out into some separate application. You can just do everything that you could do with, uh, with the data in Python. You just do right within Excel and you can just put a button on your spreadsheet and share the spreadsheet and everybody else can use your automations. It's amazing. And not only is it more useful, but it's also much less common. So you're gonna really stand out as somebody who knows how to use VBA because most people, including most experienced data analysts, do not know how to use VBA. Okay, step five is experience bootstrapping. And this is something that I came up with myself, so I highly doubt that you're gonna find it in any boot camp or any other video, uh, you know, unless this gets big and, and a bunch of people copy me. But what this means, and this is how I got my first job as a data analyst, by the way, between VBA and experience bootstrapping, these are the things that, that did it for me more than anything else. 
What experience bootstrapping means is it means that you find ways to use your new skills, right? Your Excel, SQL, your data viz, your VBA skills at a real organization, right? So it's not just some like dummy data set on the internet that you're using to create a portfolio that you might've just copied from somebody else. No, you're actually using real data from a real organization. Now, which organization depends on your situation. The best thing to do, if you can, is your current job. If you were working at a company and you can get access to that company's data and use your new skills on that data, create some dashboards from that data, maybe create some automation on that data. Then, now you have real experience for a real organization that you can put on your resume. Now, if you can't do that for your current job, there's other ways around that, right? So you could talk to a friend's business, you could talk to your church or a charity organization. Like there's a whole bunch of businesses or organizations that you could find that would give you a little bit of data that you could play with and you could actually create these analyses for that organization and have real experience to show and to talk about in interviews. So this is absolutely invaluable. This is what got me a job making 70,000 a year to start with no formal job as a data analyst before that. Okay, step six is to create a video portfolio. Now, this is another step that I created myself, so you're probably not gonna find it anywhere else. This I created specifically for my students. I didn't have to do this. I didn't have any portfolio when I started, but again, that was 10 years ago, and the market was less competitive than it is today. Today, I recommend that you have a portfolio. Now, the problem with a typical portfolio that most people are doing is they just have a few dashboards on a website that they say that they created. Now, they could have just like copied and pasted or they could have just followed the steps on a YouTube video. Maybe they have no idea how they created it. They just, you know, followed the steps or maybe they even stole it. So a portfolio on its own, in my opinion, is not really that wonderful. And also you got to consider that the people that are actually looking at your resume and trying to hire, they're probably seeing a million resumes and they really don't want to spend 10 minutes to go look at your portfolio and look at your charts and dashboards and figure out how to use them and figure out what they mean and what's going on. Right, so if you want people to actually understand, what I recommend that you do is you create the portfolio and then you create a little explainer video that's only a minute or two long that walks them through a couple of impressive projects that you've, that you've done and you just explain to them how the project works and how you you created them. So this makes it much easier for them to digest, right? They don't have to figure it out. They just push play and you explain it to them in a minute or two. And it shows that you actually know what you're talking about, right? You actually understand the project. You didn't just copy it from somewhere. Now, I recommend that you do two projects for this. This is what I teach all my students. And the first project, I recommend that you do something in Excel using VBA with a backend SQL data connection. So that's really setting you apart from the beginning because for the first thing, most data analysts, even experienced data analysts, have no idea how to do that. It looks really impressive and you're using three skills, demonstrating three skills all in one shot. And then for the second uh, project, I recommend you show a data visualization that you've done. So something that you've created that you can show in Tableau Public. And basically with these, you want the, the flashier, the better. The more nice looking they are and the cooler functions that you incorporate, the more impressive it's gonna be. Okay, now step seven is to add all of your new skills, your new experience, and the link to your portfolio on your resume and your LinkedIn profile. How exactly to do that is a long lesson unto itself and there are certain things that you want to do in, in your job title and your job descriptions that will show you in the best positive light and highlight the attributes that you want to show, um, which actually I'll give you a free training in the description if you're interested, which will walk you through more detail about really everything that we're talking about here, but specifically how to do the resume and uh, incorporate that experience bootstrapping. So you can check that out if you're interested, but anyway, step seven is you want to apply all this new skills, experience, and portfolio to your resume and your LinkedIn. And then finally, step eight is to apply. Go and apply for as many jobs as you can and target the ones that you're the best fit for. Because remember, the market is becoming more competitive. So you want to narrow down 
on the jobs that you have the highest likelihood of qualifying for. And so one really good tip for how to do this, there's a lot to that. I mean, that could be a whole separate video, but one really good tip that I found is to target specifically jobs that are related to what you're doing now, that are related to your industry and or your job function. So let's say that you are working now in the manufacturing industry. Well, you might want to apply for jobs as a data analyst in the manufacturing industry. Or let's say that you work in the marketing department right now. You should target jobs that are data analysts within a marketing department or data analysts that support a marketing function because you already understand the lingo, you understand the industry, you understand that department, that's gonna give you a leg up over all the people that might have more data analyst experience, but they don't understand the industry or they don't understand the job function as well as you do. And here's a little bonus tip for you that I would do, and that is to actually connect with people on LinkedIn. So if I'm gonna go apply for a job that I think is gonna be a good fit, I look on LinkedIn for people that work at that company and see if I can make a connection with them. Preferably people that work in the same department or in a similar job. So I find somebody who's already a data analyst in that company and just say, hey, I noticed that you're a data analyst for XYZ company and I'm interested in the job there. I was wondering how you like the position Position, right? Just kind of try to make some small talk with them. Don't ask them for anything up front. Get a few messages back and forth. And not everybody's going to answer you, by the way. Some people won't. That's okay. You can send multiple messages to multiple people. Get an idea of what they think of it. And then once you've built a little bit of a connection with them, then you can ask them, hey, do you have any tips for how I can best apply to this company? And uh, they might even offer to give you a referral. And if they don't offer, you can always ask. You can say, okay, well, you know, do you have a referral program or anything? Do you think you could put in a good word for me? And the worst thing that they could say is no, but if they say yes, then having an employee referral in the company makes you much more likely to get the position than if you didn't have that referral. Now, I realize this is a pretty high level overview. I didn't really go into details very much here for the sake of time, but if you would like a longer, more detailed training that will tell you more step-by-step -step on how to do this, I will put my free training in the description below. So check that out if you're interested. And one more bonus tip is to learn ChatGPT and put that on your resume because that is going to be the future of data analytics. And if you are keeping up with that, that's gonna make you more relevant than if you're getting left behind. So if you're interested in learning how you can use ChatGPT to make you a better data analyst, check out this video where I explain how to do exactly that.